This week on HomeKit News, the HomeAM 64GB Smart Camera. Before we start, I just want to be upfront with everyone and say that this is not a cheap camera, with it currently listed at $399. So if this is not in your price range, I want to save you the time watching this video just to find this out at the very end. With that understood, I'll get straight to unboxing this new HomeKit enabled camera. So the first thing to greet you is the large black eye that is the HomeAM 64GB and there's a card surrounding the lens that has a QR code that takes you to the App Store so you can download the HomeAM app, which is required. I'll start with the camera itself and the first thing I notice is the amazing build quality and general weight to it. It really doesn't feel like a plastic shell with a few wires and a motherboard if you get my drift. It's rather minimal with only two little speakers at the front and it simply feels like a well-tooled piece of machinery for want of a better description. Of course the feel and look are nothing without decent specs and performance so here are some details to give you an idea of what's inside. If you see the pause video icon, feel free to stop the video to take in all the details as the company aren't shy of showing all the specs and features of this camera, of which there are many. Beside the bullet points listed here, the company go at length to also detail the various ways in which the camera cleans up the image so you get the best view possible, which includes many things I've never seen mentioned before, like gamma, shading and flicker correction, as well as texture enhancing and an IR optimizer. Whilst the camera doesn't have pan and tilt, the lens does offer a decent 134 degree field of view. You also get a pair of stereo speakers which are the things often overlooked in cameras. The body itself is made of anodized aluminium which gives it that premium look and feel. Yet more specs so feel free to pause the video at this point but it's worth noting that the camera can connect to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band and has NFC pairing for HomeKit. Now the camera itself is only 1080p however which may come as a surprise given the price point. I'll now show you what else is in the box, but feel free to use the chapters below if this part doesn't interest you. So the next thing we see is a magnetic stand, and this is made from the same material as the camera itself and allows the camera to be mounted on walls or ceilings as well as sit on shelves. Here you can see it's reassuringly strong at gripping the camera, so there's really no chance of it simply dropping to the floor. We get a mysterious little box I'll come back to in a minute, along with a longer than average cable to power the camera. The cable uses USB-C on both ends and is 3 meters or just under 10 feet in length. Back to the little box I mentioned earlier, and this contains a set of what are called ferrite rings that are designed to reduce radio noise problems. I've seen these things many years ago in the past, but have never really understood their use, so it's quite interesting to see them here. And if they do the job, it's all good. You simply clip these rings to the power cable, and you're done. Next up is a plate that works as part of the mounting kit if you want to wall mount the camera. The metal plate comes with a strong adhesive backing with a small circular nub on one side that matches up with a recess on the camera stand. It's magnetic as you can see here when I place it with the camera stand and you also get a pair of screws and raw plugs for a more permanent mounting solution. We're not quite done yet with a couple of small envelopes, the first of which contains instructions and stickers, with the second envelope containing a branded microfiber cloth to keep the camera looking clean and shiny. The final piece of kit in the box is the power supply itself, which is all in black and even has the same logo imprinted on it. It uses a USB-C port to work with the provided cable and once again just adds that premium feel to the whole package. Even though it's a US type plug, it can work in other regions too at 100 to 240 volts at 50 and 60 hertz. When it comes to setting up the camera initially in the Home Am app, the process is quite clever as it binds to your phone using Bluetooth, creating a one-off anonymous account. Once you then set up a full account in the app, the camera can no longer be detected via Bluetooth for subsequent pairing, if it was stolen for example. Additionally, if the camera is stolen, neither the recordings nor the camera can be set up or accessed until the original account removes that camera, so it becomes useless to thieves. 
A special six-digit code is sent to your email that then allows full control of all the features, which includes also setting the camera up in HomeKit. Now you can get the HomeKit code within the app, or you can simply use NFC in the camera so your phone can detect it for pairing. When it comes to the HomeKit side of things, it's all standard stuff using the same setup procedure as normal. I'll now quickly run through the features of the HomeAM app first, which opens up to the live camera stream. You get access to four separate modes, which are View, Nanny, Guard and Capture mode. This mode gives you a larger display, but not the whole view. So you need to manually pan left or right to see more of the image. You can also digitally zoom in up to eight times though. At the bottom of the screen in each mode you get two separate timeline guides, one of which is for motion which shows waves that vary in size depending on the intensity of the motion. If I go back through the timeline you can see peaks where motion is more intense. Now below that is a separate audio timeline that gives you a more traditional idea of loudness of any particular noise. Next is Nanny Mode, which offers two options, the first of which is a sound monitor. So once activated, you can hear any sounds coming from the camera on your phone, even when the app is minimised. The second is for detecting very small amounts of movement, so you can probably guess this is ideal for monitoring your baby. Guard Mode, on the other hand, has a function that is called Intelligent Detection. So it's a form of AI motion detection, which also offers you the option to activate it based on your location. Finally, onto Capture Mode, which still has the live view, as is the case with the other modes, but in this case offers you the option to take a snapshot or a video recording of the live feed, or even an event further back in the timeline. These recordings are all stored in your phone's photo library. To record an event, you simply hold down the record button whilst the recording is played back. I'll go back to Live View and then select View Mode, and as with all other modes in the app, you have the option to stream in low quality if maybe you're out and about and want to conserve data usage, for example. It should be noted that recordings are always recorded at 1080p, regardless of whether you're streaming in low or high quality. As you may have guessed, in the Home app it's all fairly generic, but it is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video, which is good if you don't want to rely on HomeAM's built-in recording option. You can disable the status light, but to fully turn it off you do need to do the same in the HomeAM app. As standard, it exposes a motion sensor service, which I'll test out later in this video. For a simple image quality test, I've taken a series of screenshots under different lighting conditions with the HomeAM, along with two other cameras, one of my favourites, the Akara G3, and one of the cheapest, the Eufy Pan and Tilt. The first set was taken on a dull morning with no lighting, all three do fairly well producing a colour image. The HomeAM gives the largest viewing angle, but then the other cameras do have Pan and Tilt, so it's not the best comparison. These next images were taken in the morning with indoor lighting on. You can see the cove lighting is blown out a little in the other two cameras compared to the HomeAM due to its wide dynamic range feature. Next we have three images taken in the evening with virtually no lights. All three do pretty well with night vision in this case, with the exception of the light coming through the door in the corridor, which I have to give to the HomeAM. Next we have shots taken in the evening with lighting, and once again the cove lighting is blown out on the other cameras compared to the HomeAM, which as before is due to the camera's wide dynamic range feature. Next we have colour mood lighting which shows the HomeAM fairer a little better than the other two, with the cove lighting blown out again in the others, so you can't make out the colour. Finally on to contrast comparisons, and in this case I've aimed the cameras at a window with bright light streaming through. Now whilst all three do reasonably well, I once again have to give it to the HomeAM for balancing the image a little better, which as before is a little blown out on the G3 and the Eufy. Moving on to the camera speakers with a simple playback test. This is a test. One, two, three. This is a test. This is a test. One, two, three. This is a test. This is a test. One, two, three. This is a test. This is a test. One, two, three. This is a test. This is a test. One, two, three. This is a test. This is a test. One, two, three. This is a test. And next, a set of microphone tests at separate distances. This is a test at one meter. This is a test at one meter. This is a test at one meter. This is a test at two meters. This is a test at two meters. This is a test at two meters. 
This is a test at three meters. This is a test at three meters. This is a test at three meters. This is a test at five meters. This is a test at five meters. This is a test at five meters. I'm now going to show you three identical clips taken with the three cameras or downloaded via HomeKit Secure Video. You should note that with the Eufy and the G3, even though they're capable of 2K recording, they are reduced to 1080p in the Home app and recorded at 24 frames per second, whereas the Home app is recording at 30 frames per second, which does make a small difference in my opinion, giving marginally smoother playback, although it's not a deal breaker. See what you think. To be more complete, here are three identical clips taken from each camera's own app. You'll note that the kitchen lights are nicely balanced with this first clip from the Home Am camera, whereas they're a little blown out on the Eufy and the G3, as we've previously seen. Additionally, the image from the Eufy cam has a more blue tint to the recording, which is not representative. The G3 does better than the Eufy with a warmer overall image. Generally speaking, all three cameras do fairly well, but on these clips and previous snapshots I've shown, the Home Am does a better all-round job balancing contrast and visibility. On to my final test, which is motion sensor reaction times. In this first test, I used low-level mood lighting with motion coming from the door at the end of the corridor in all cases. Both the G3 and the Home Am are almost neck and neck with the Eufy trailing. However, when we get to the night vision test, the Home Am is the winner, although not by much, with the G3 coming in last place on this occasion. It should be noted that the Home Am does use AI for a variety of functions, all carried out on the device with no intervention from the user, but also no cloud functionality involved at all either. One of these use cases is motion detection of course, which the company has worked on specifically to reduce unnecessary or repeat notifications, leaving these only to things that are out of the ordinary. Zorachka also told me that they have various AI scenarios that can discern not only between humans, faces and pets etc, but also scripts that can discern between parties, groups of children playing or even a meeting. The fruits of this AI functionality can be seen over time in the Home Am app timeline where bubbles are created showing various types of detection, not just humans or pets. So what do I think of the Home Am 64GB? Is it worth the asking price and what's the potential for pros and cons? First is the build quality which I have to admit is top of the line and something I can imagine Apple would be proud of in terms of attention to detail and materials used. I'm not sure if this camera is unique in its ability to ensure the camera and its contents are protected in the way I previously outlined, but it gives peace of mind knowing that the camera can't be used in any way without access to the original account. In my tests, I did find image quality better and smoother than the other cameras tested, especially in low light where the Home Am is still able to glean a colour image where others switch to night mode. Additionally, there was no hint of image graininess in either low light or night vision. Even though I like being able to use HomeKit Secure Video, the ease of which I can access and download footage directly from the camera in its own app really makes it feel a lot easier and more user friendly. Hopefully Apple can take note. On to the cons, and I can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is the price. There's no denying it's expensive, but of course you're not obliged to buy it and there are plenty of cheaper options that on the surface do much the same or in some cases more. But all I would say is that Apple users tend to spend more on their devices for the same reason I would argue is present in this camera, much of which I've outlined earlier. Would I buy it? No, because I don't have the money and I don't require the level of security the Home Amp offers in general. But if I did, then I would be tempted to have at least a couple of these and dare I say it, use the Home Amp app for viewing live feeds and recordings over the Home Amp. On to the final con, and for the price we really should be getting at least 2K. But when I asked Zorachka about this, their response was that the focus was on making the image as good as it could be, given the constraints within HomeKit, without compromising speed of loading, quality of image, and bandwidth use. Now I can buy that, and in all honesty, as this is an indoor camera, I'm not sure that 2K would make a lot of difference, and 4K may well be overkill, as for the most part we aren't looking for the level of details you might require from an outdoor camera, for things like reading number plates for example. 
On the flip side, one could argue that for the price, you do have to give something to the customer of perceived value, like 2K recording, even if it's more of a gesture than a real improvement. Hopefully Zorachka can add even more functionality to this camera over time to make it stand out in many more ways. So that's our take on the HOMAM, but if you want to get more on this device, click on the link above to read our written review. So until the next video, stay safe and get vaccinated.